Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today we're going to be taking a look at a hacked PS3. We're going to be going over all the things that it can do, and we're just going to be seeing uh, what's inside and seeing if it's worth it or not. But anyway, this is my personal PS3, the one with the nice glowing lights. This one is not hacked. If you'd like to see a tutorial about how to do that with the lights, let me know in the comments. And uh, But let's shift our focus to this PS3, because this is the hacked PS3 that the video is about. So let's boot it up and see what's on the inside. So the first thing, when you turn it on, that graphic of my logo, that's not added in the photo editing program. That's actually on the PS3, which is really cool because you can change the graphic that it boots up with. So that's just a, that's awesome. Uh, that's really cool. So that's one thing that I just wanted to point out real quick. So secondly, the whole PS3, it, appears relatively normal like a normal PS3 everything's kind of in place until you get to the game section so in the game section you have a couple different added things and we're gonna be talking about this one MMCM or multi-man this is uh, this is one thing that you're gonna be very familiar with uh, using a hacked PS3 you use it a lot it's mainly where you use all of your um, disk based games if you see, if you press R1, you get all these different interfaces or all these different menus. They're all garbage. You don't use any of them. And you just select between R1 or L1 to go back to this one. This is the interface that you want. This is the only one you want to use. Uh, all the other, I don't know why they're there. But when you select up here into the top right, you get uh, your game selector. Where if you press square, you can kind of like itemize your games. You could select between just PS2, you could select all, PS1, and you just keep going back. And like I said, Multiman is only for disc based games, so let's load one. Here we just loaded Shadow of the Colossus, and what it does is it then closes Multiman, and then you can go and select your PS2 game, almost like if you were inserting the disc into the PS3. So here we have, uh, let's boot up a PS2 game on the hacked PS3 and see what it's like. Now what's really cool about this is you have uh, some additional settings that you wouldn't normally have on a PS2. For instance, you get all these different screen mode uh, settings, so you can actually change how the screen looks a little bit. It's pretty much essentially you're just changing your aspect ratios, and then you can turn on something called smoothing, which you'll see in a second where it, it just smooths out all the textures. So screen mode is normal, that's four by three. Full screen gives it a 16 by nine stretched with some, some people, despise and some people don't really care it doesn't really I don't know whatever you like play it however matters to you and however you enjoy it and that's the correct way to play it in my opinion so there's no right or wrong but let's go check out normal so normal like I said is four by three as you see here it is and then let's go look at off off is weird I don't know what it does it just I think it decompress goes to a lower resolution I'm not sure but this is this is it on off and I'm gonna be playing the rest of the game in full screen as you see right here and I want to point this out real quick you might see some like slight like juddering that's even a word or like uh, slightly choppy it is and I found that some games are like this and some are not I don't really I played a bunch of different games so let's load a, a PSP game and see what happens oh wait we actually have to install something to load PSP games, so I want to show you how absolutely easy it is. So right here I have my flash drive, I hear I have the package file, I drop it into my flash drive, eject the flash drive, and then I put in the flash drive into the PS3. So this is how easy it is to install like when you need like to install a new program onto the PS3. Put it in your flash drive, and then you just go to package manager and then you can select your flash drive and pull it off. So I wanted to show, like I said, I wanted to show this to just to kind of show not necessarily how to do all of this. At the end, I'll give information as to how to uh, do all of this, but for now, I just want to show how easy it is to install a package. So that package was to play PSP games that we all have here and we use Square to select all the different PSP games. And it does the uh, it does the same exact thing like the PS2 did, is it boots it into like the disk drive, and then you can go and you can play a PSP game. 
And what I've found, so like the stuttering and the jagging like effect in the PS2 games, I haven't encountered that in any PSP game, in any uh, emulated game, in anything else. It's just with select PS2 Hi. games. See here you have a PSP game running perfectly fine. A full screen PSP game. And that's that's why that's a big reason as to why I feel you would want one of these. I mean you could just hack a PS TV and get your PSP games full screen. So let's go look at some of the settings in Multiman. You have tons of settings to customize it, but the most important one that we want to look at is this um, the OS of Multiman. And like I said, there's tons and tons of different settings you can change. But we're going to look at the file manager in Multiman because that one right here, this is how you actually access like the root of your PS3 and all of its different files. And it makes adding games so easy and so convenient once everything's all set up. Because right here you can just, you go into your... Here, let's go into PS2 games. You can look at all of your games, the file structure, everything. It just pops up. And then let's go into our flash drive that we have, uh, that we're about to insert into our PS3 again, which has a game on it. And here you see Steambot Chronicles. You just press triangle on it, and then you select copy, and then you just paste it directly into the PS2 folder and that's how you transfer games. It's very, very easy. It's just time consuming when you're doing like a lot of games. And like I said, you can see all the different file structures of all your games all right here. You can change the location of where they are to make them more convenient for you to find. And overall, it's a lot of setup. Here, we accidentally went to that bogus menu again, so we just pressed L1 real quick. And like I said, there's so many different settings you can change. I don't really mess with too many of the settings. I pretty much just use just use it for its intended purpose, you know, playing all these different games. So the last one I want to touch on is RetroArch right here. So RetroArch, uh, this is for all your retro stuff. Even though you have access to your, you have access to all these games in both of the different programs, you'd want to use RetroArch just for your uh, older emulation style games. You know, like all the all the retro consoles. RetroArch is essentially it's a um, a lot of people don't really like it or they kind of it's it's not the best emulator it's always best to use like the emulator that has all the different cores for all the different uh, game consoles so it's like a multi emulator which aren't always the best it's always best to use a dedicated emulator but for this purpose it works just fine loads the game game looks perfect and actually in um, you have all of these different directories where when you want to go to a game you go to ROMs then here's all the file structure that we created in Multiman OS so that we can look through all these different games and then play the ones we want and it's really cool because you get to also find these uh, fan translations of games so you get to play some Japanese games that never came to America like uh, Magic Knight Ray Earth on the Super Famicom translated in English we can play that on this so that's actually like a big awesome point and in uh, RetroArch if you press the two analog thumbsticks you get access to all these additional uh, save menu or an additional menu with all sorts of different settings as well you can do save states you can bind L1 to just save so like you press L1 it saves right there and then the next time you play the game you can bind R L R2 and you just press R2 and boom you're back at the game so if you want to learn how to do this, I would check out Mr. Mario on, on YouTube. Uh, really awesome dude, really great channel. Go check him out and he does a lot of like how-to videos, tutorial style videos, and that's where you can find exactly how to uh, do all of this to your, to your PS3 is on one of his videos. So at the end of the day, this is something that pretty much anybody can do if you have a little bit of patience, if you have a computer and a flash drive. You can do all of this. Uh, it's a lot of back and forth between the computer and your PlayStation. It's relatively time consuming to set this up, but in the end I would say it's, it's absolutely worth it uh, because you have pretty much whatever game you want at your fingertips 
all running on original hardware, essentially, because it's a PS3, even though the PS3 is emulating a lot of the other hardware, it's still, you're playing it on a game console with a controller. You get to play handheld games on a big screen TV, and that's a huge draw. It's, you have everything on a PS3, PS3 wireless controller. It's, the games don't look or perform absolutely perfectly as you can get them on their true original hardware. But I mean, hey, why nitpick? Why nitpick over that? Like, it's not that big of a deal, I don't think. I mean, it's worth it if you have the time and you have a PS3. I highly suggest doing this to a PS3 slim model, like I showed at the very beginning, as opposed to a PS3 uh, fat, which will eventually overheat and die on you. So that's my one recommendation for it. The, the longevity of the PS3 Slims is fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a time consuming thing. It's pretty much worth it. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it and there's a lot more that I didn't show in this video, but I felt like I just wanted to show the core of um, the main things that you would want to see and know that you could do. So, uh, thank you guys very, very much for watching. Uh, thanks for checking out all my other videos, checking out my website, following us on social media, checking out the live streams, all that kind of stuff. Thank you all very much, and I'll see you next time.